In this final guide of this course, we are going to build out the ability to log users out of our application. And this is going to give you the full suite of authentication tools that you'll need to implement into your own React and Rails applications. And once again, these same principles will apply to Angular and to Vue and any other JavaScript framework or library you're working with. So let's get started on this. I want to add a log out button to our home page here. They'll have the ability to contact our API. It's going to log the user out, which means it's going to delete the session. And just as a quick refresher, if you open up the Rails application itself, we're going to open it up and take a look at what that looks like from a code perspective. So if you open up the sessions controller, and go to log out, you can see that all you have to do in Rails is call the reset session function. That's going to remove everything out of the session, which is what we're wanting to do when we are logging out. It also returns a status of 200 and some status code just saying logged out is true. So let's now build this out. So open up Visual Studio Code or whatever your text editor is. And in the app component, we're going to have to have a couple things here. The first is we're going to have a new function called handle logout. So I'm going to say this dot handle logout is equal to this dot handle log out and we're going to bind it to this because we're going to be passing this function as a prop. So we're going to be passing this to our home component. So right underneath component dead mount, I'm going to say handle log out. We don't have to take any arguments or anything like that. We're simply going to update our state. So we'll say this dot set state. We're going to set logged in status equal to not logged in and then we're going to set the user equal to the empty object. Now if you are curious, I know I've kind of mentioned this before, but if you're curious on why I've logged in status to a constant string, the reason for that is because JavaScript can be very confusing sometimes when it comes to conditionals. And so you might run into some behavior where you end up with an empty string and you are going to get a false value or you're going to end up with some kind of value that might mimic or might trick one of your conditionals into thinking it's passing or failing when it's not. Whereas when you're using just a string constant like this, it is very clear if it matches. You can do triple equals. You can make sure that when you're checking to see if a user is logged in, they actually are, and you don't have some weird conditional edge case that occurs. So that's a reason why I use that. And I do this in pretty much all of my applications. So now that we have that, we need to pass handle logout as a prop to home. So I'm going to say handle logout is equal to this dot handle logout. So now that we have that, our home component actually can work with it. So open up home. And now what we can do is create a function here called handle logout click, something like that. Doesn't need to take in any arguments, but all it needs to do is call this handle logout, and that's going to update the parent component. You actually have to call this dot props dot handle logout. Now let's add that button in. So we can create a button and then just say log out inside of it. And we'll add a on click handler here. So I'll say on click equals curly brackets and pass in a function. And so we're going to pass in an anonymous function. So start with parens, then a fat arrow. And then we're going to set this equal to handle log out click. We technically could simply call our this.props.handleLogout. It's completely up to you. And then make sure you're calling this.handleLogout click. And then you're calling and invoking the function. And for that, you may also need to bind it to this. So you can say this.handleLogout click equals this.handleLogout 
handle lockout, lockout click, bind this, hit save, and now let's see if this is working. So I'm going to click this. This is not contacting the API, as you may have noticed, but let's just test this out to see if it's working. So if I click log out, you can see it updates the state to not logged in. Now this is not accurate because this didn't do anything with the API. However, I was just making sure that we had the correct connection between the app component and the home component. If you hit refresh, you'll see that it says logged in again because that's what the API is telling us. So now that we have that, now we can actually call the API. So make sure that you import React or import Axios. So import Axios from Axios. And now we will call our endpoint for logging a user out. So inside of handle logout click, I'll call axios dot, and the function call is delete, and we're going to call HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3001 slash logout. That's the endpoint that we sent up in our Rails application. Make sure you pass in an object, and that's going to say with credentials, and that's going to be set to true. And for the then case, so when that occurs, we don't really care about the response at all, because the response is, if it works, the response is just going to send back that status code of, yes, they're logged out. So in that case, we're just going to call this stop props handle logout. And then we will catch any errors. So these will be server errors. So I'll say, if there's an error, I just want you to console log out, log out error, and give us the details. And then at the very end of that, make sure you close your parens, and you should be all good to go. Let's test this out. So if you open up Google Chrome, give it a refresh, you can see we're logged in. And now if I click log out, it says not logged in, and if you hit refresh, you can see it actually worked. So we have destroyed that session, we no longer are authenticated, that cookie is no longer in the browser, and that's how the logout functionality works. So great job if you went through that. Great job if you went through that full course. You now know how to build a full authentication system using Ruby on Rails as an API and React as the front end, and now you can see how they communicate, how they can talk to each other. And if you're new to React or Rails development, hopefully Hopefully this also gives you an introduction to seeing how you can build these type of systems out. And now that you have the ability to have an authentication system in your app, you can start building other features. So great job if you went through that. Let me know if you have any questions whatsoever, and I look forward to talking with you in your next course.